subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of March. Indian government tells states to be on guard amid resurgence of COVID-19 cases in South East Asia and Europe. Several Pakistan lawmakers defect from PM Imran Khan's party ahead of no confidence vote. And People in India Nepal revel in colors of holy festival. And now for all the details. With the resurgence of COVID-19 cases in Southeast Asia and some European countries, Indian government has advised states and union territories to continue focusing on the five-fold strategy that is test, track, treat, vaccination and adherence to COVID appropriate behavior. Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan stressed on maintaining testing according to protocols, observing all precautions and not letting the guard down while resuming economic and social activities. Meanwhile, India on Friday registered less than 3,000 infections for the fifth consecutive day. The Indian government has advised states and union territories to continue focusing on a five-fold strategy, that is test, track, treat, vaccination and adherence to COVID-19 appropriate behaviour with the resurgence of coronavirus cases in Southeast Asia and some European countries. India's Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan in a letter has asked all the states and union territories to ensure that an adequate number of samples are submitted to the INSECOG network for timely detection of new COVID variants. Bhushan also stressed on maintaining testing according to protocols, observing all precautions and not letting the guard down while resuming economic and social activities. The government pointed out that it is vital to encourage eligible beneficiaries to get vaccinated against COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccination drive was expanded to include children in the age group 12 to 14 years on March 16 and are being administered the Corbevax vaccine. Meanwhile, India on Friday registered less than 3,000 infections for the fifth consecutive day. India's active case load currently stands at 29,181. In news from Pakistan, several lawmakers from Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling PTI party withdrew their support from him on Thursday ahead of a no-confidence vote, stalking more uncertainty over whether he can hang on to power. At least 24 disgruntled PTI lawmakers were holed in Sindh House after deciding to vote against PM Khan later this month, reports suggested. In the latest, Information Minister Fawad Chaudhary said on Friday that the government would file a reference in the Supreme Court for disqualification of parliamentarians on grounds of defection. Without the coalition partners and the dissidents, Khan's party, which has 155 seats in the lower house, would fall short of the 172 needed to retain power. Opposition parties filed a no-confidence motion on March 8, blaming the Prime Minister for mismanaging the economy. The joint opposition consists of major parties such as PMLN and PPP and has strength of nearly 163 lawmakers in the lower house. Moving on, scores of Baloch political and human rights activists held a protest in front of the UN office in Geneva on Thursday and raised voices against gross human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan province. They claimed innocent Baloch people are being forcibly disappeared and killed in staged encounters for voicing their concerns, while Islamabad is exploiting local natural resources in the region. Baloch political and human rights defenders held a seminar and a protest on Thursday on the sidelines of UNHRC session in Geneva and demanded immediate intervention by international community to stop gross human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan province. 
The activists claim Baloch people are living under the shadow of the Pakistani military, which has continued to pursue its infamous kill and dump policy. They blamed Baloch activists are forcibly disappeared before being killed in staged encounters to muzzle any dissent while Islamabad exploits local natural resources in the region. Uh, protest uh, against Pakistani uh, human rights abuses in uh, gross human rights abuses in Baluchistan, and we are requesting the United Nations, international community, and the so-called civilized world to intervene in Baluchistan, as they have done in Ukraine. Russia has invaded a sovereign nation, Ukraine. Similarly, in 1948, Pakistan has invaded, forcibly annexed Baluchistan. Earlier this week, Sindhi activists also raised concern over elimination of Sindhi people by Pakistan and persecution of minority Hindus, Ahmadis and Christians in Sindh. They call Pakistan a terrorist state where minorities are on the verge of extinction. Una McGurk, an Irish human rights lawyer, called out Pakistan this week on the sidelines of UNHRC session for denying freedom of expression and self-determination to people of Pakistan administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. She said the international community is well aware how Islamabad misuses draconian anti-terror laws against those voicing their just concerns in the occupied territories. Una McGurk, an Irish human rights lawyer, has raised concern over Pakistan's denial of fundamental rights, including right of expression and self-determination, to people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan. While attending an event on the sidelines of the 49th UNHRC session in Geneva, Una said that the international community is well aware how the voices of the residents of Pakistan's occupied territories are muzzled with force and they are subjected to draconian anti-terror laws for raising their just concerns. Owing to routine torture of political activists, the common public lives in fear and cannot even demand their basic rights, she said. People who live in Kashmir-occupied Pakistan simply do not have those basic rights. Uh, the anti-terrorism laws are uh, used uh, against uh, political opponents and indeed many members of civil society. Journalists are frequently harassed and as a consequence they have to self-center. Rights activists have long blamed that in the name of countering terrorism and to muzzle dissent, arbitrary detentions, extrajudicial killings and prosecution of common public and activists are committed in Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban will allow girls around Afghanistan to return to class when high schools open next week, an education official has said, after months of uncertainty over whether the group would allow full access to education for girls and women. However, female students would be taught separately from males and only by female teachers. After months of uncertainty over whether Taliban would allow full access to education for girls and women, Aziz Ahmad Rayan, a spokesman for the Ministry of Education on Thursday, told news agency Reuters that the Islamist group will allow girls around Afghanistan to return to class when high schools open next week. But there are some conditions for girls, he said, adding that female students would be taught separately from males and only by female teachers. In some rural areas where there was a shortage of female teachers, he said that older male teachers would be allowed to teach girls. Allowing girls and women into schools and colleges has been one of the key demands the international community has made of the hardline Islamist movement since it toppled the Western-backed government last August. Most countries have so far refused to formally recognize the Taliban amid concerns over their treatment of girls and women and allegations of human rights abuses against former soldiers and officials from the ousted administration. The last time the group ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001, they banned female education and most employment. Since regaining power, boys and men have returned to education in far greater number than girls and women. The Taliban is seeking to run the country according to its interpretation of Islamic law, while at the same time accessing billions of dollars in development aid that it desperately needs to stave off widespread poverty and hunger. 
Sanctions against some leading members of the group have complicated this situation. The Taliban say they respect women's rights in accordance with Islamic law and local custom. But many women have reported restrictions on access to public life, including jobs, forcing some to drop out of the workforce. The Taliban during their previous rule in Afghanistan banned cinema, music and television outright, deeming them un-Islamic. But this time, the Islamists have sought to present a more moderate face since coming to power last year. For the first time since Kabul takeover, a TV drama was screened in the capital as a sign of promoting the cinema industry in the war-torn country. For the first time since the Taliban's takeover of power in Afghanistan and the evacuation of the US and other foreign forces, a TV drama Surk Sali, meaning radio, was screened in capital Kabul recently as a sign of promoting the cinema industry in the war-torn country. The screening has raised hope among cinema lovers that the film industry could be developed under the Taliban-led administration. اگر که مشکل خلق می شود این برنامه گرفته نمی شود یعنی تا هنوز که حرفی نیست و امیدوار هستم که روال بهتر از این باشه یعنی ما مطمئن تر باشیم تا بتونیم کارهای دیگه را انجام بدیم ستایش اتای one of the attendees of the ceremony said she believes that permission to shoot the tv serial is a step towards developing cinema culture in the country بله فضای خیلی زیباست تا حالا منظم است و همچنین می‌بینیم همه رسانه حضور دارن و خیلی خوشحال هستیم که امروز برنامه آمدیم و بیشتر درباره فرهنگی که توانستن تا این مرحله برسن و برای مردم برسانن خوشحالیم ولی تشکری می‌کنیم که امروز اجازه دادن تا دو یک یک قدم در عرصه فرهنگ هنر سینما گذاشته شده the Taliban banned cinema, music and television outright during their previous rule, deemed them un-Islamic and ending a rich tradition in a country that started showing films in the 1920s, but have sought to present a more moderate face this time. Zebuhla Mujahid, Deputy Minister of Information and Culture of the Taliban-led caretaker government, has urged filmmakers to produce films based on values of Islamic teaching and Afghan culture. People across India and Nepal celebrated the Festival of Colors Holi on Friday by smearing each other with colors and dancing to the beats of drums. Celebrated at the onset of spring, Holi is associated with the eternal love of Hindu god Lord Krishna and Radha. Hundreds of devotees thronged the famous Banke Bihari temple in India's northern Vrindavan city the land associated with Hindu god Lord Krishna and reveled in the festival of colors Holi on Friday by smearing each other with colors and dancing to religious songs. Celebrating the eternal love of Lord Krishna and his concert Radha, the festivities of Holi were granted in most places as after two years COVID-19 infections have subsided significantly with less than 30,000 active cases throughout the country of more than 1.3 billion. में सब छोटे बड़े सब तरह के लोग हर परिवार के लोग और हर जात के लोग धर्म के लोग बिना बेदो बोल करके होली खेलते रंग खेलते होली इज द मोस्ट अवेटेड फेस्टिवल अमंग हिंदू स्पेशली अमंग द यूथ एज पीपल फॉरगेट म्यूचुअल डिफरेंसेस एंड स्प्रिंकल पाउडर्ड कलर्स ऑन ईच अदर हेराल्डिंग स्प्रिंग होली रिप्रेजेंट्स अ टाइम ऑफ फॉरगिवनेस रिन्यूड फ्रेंडशिप एंड अ ट्रायम्फ ऑफ गुड ओवर इवल सब एकदम सब मिलजुल के होली खेल रहे हैं रात से होली चली है सेलिब्रेशन अच्छा खासा चल रहा है बहुत बढ़िया लग रहा है बहुत बढ़िया माहौल है यहाँ पे सिमिलर सीन्स वी विटनेस इन नेबरिंग नेपाल वे हंड्रेड्स ऑफ यंगस्टर्स एंड टॉरिस्ट गैडेड एट द फेमस बसंतपुर दरबार स्क्वायर इन काठमांडू टू सेलिब्रेट होली द फेस्टिवल इज ऑल्सो एसोसिएटेड विथ मिथोलॉजिकल स्टोरी ऑफ चाइल्ड डेवर्टी प्रहलाद बींग प्रोटेक्टेड बाई गॉड फ्रॉम इज ऑन होलिका हु वॉन्टेड टू बर्न हिम लाइफ marking the triumph of good over evil. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Zasia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Happy Holi. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.